All right, so today we're going to look a little bit at three-dimensional figures, specifically prisms and pyramids, and then we're going to continue by looking a little bit how you can sort of take a three-dimensional prism or pyramid and turn it into a net and find the surface area. So a real quick overview about three-dimensional figures and kind of the different parts of them. There we go. It's a very common-looking three-dimensional figure you usually see. Now, of the different parts, one of the parts are the faces. The faces are just any of the flat sides. So like this side right here would be one or this side right here would be one, or the front, or the back, or the left, the right, bottom, top, we can see though that we have six of them um, on this, front, back, left, right, top, bottom. Now we also have uh, the edges. That's where two faces are going to meet. So we could see like each of these lines right here would technically be considered an edge because it is where two faces are coming together. And if we count those, we would see we have 12 specifically for this shape. Now we also have something called a vertex. A vertex is simply a corner. So any of these corner pieces where we have those faces coming together and making a point, we're going to call those that a vertex or the plural will be vertices. Um, now we also have another common three-dimensional shape. Um, where we're going to use something called an apex. Now we don't have an apex in this top one, but we would have an apex in this one. And that apex is just that point right there that's going to be opposite the base. So it's a special kind of a vertex. Um, now that brings up another term, which is base. And every face, we could say each of these, like the top one has six faces, the bottom one has four triangles and one rectangle on the bottom, so five faces, but each face can be further categorized as either a base or something called a lateral face. Now to figure out which one is the base, you want to find the flat face that's on the bottom. However, there's something additional to it, and that's the opposite side of the base must either be a parallel congruent side or an apex, meaning if we look up here and we're talking about bases and we were like, okay, so we've got the flat part right here on the bottom. We do have a matching opposite flat rectangle that is parallel, so it's a congruent matching side on the opposite side. However, if we were to look down here at this one, right, that flat part at the bottom, we do not see a matching side on the other side, but we do see an apex, so that would be that. Now, if imagine that triangular triangle thing was sort of tilted on its side, we would have to turn it upright to say that this is actually the base. And then every other thing side would be considered a lateral face. So for example, for the top one, we have two bases, and then we would have four lateral faces. For the bottom one, we would have one base, and then four lateral faces. Now continuing on with some common terms and identifying sort of what makes up a prism. Um, a prism, every prism is going to have two bases. We'll have at least three rectangular lateral faces. And the way we classify our name is by the shape of its base and then the word prism. So if we look right here, we can see that we have two bases. We can see that we have four lateral faces going around, so we would call that a rectangular prism. For this one right here, this is considered a triangular prism. And the reason is that the base, again, is that triangle, is that if we this part right here, this rectangle, that cannot be the base because it doesn't have a matching parallel opposite side. So instead, our triangles actually are going to be the bases, and that's why we call it a triangular prism. And then all three of the other lateral faces are all rectangles. The other common type would be a pyramid that's going to have one back base with an apex on the opposite, at least three lateral triangular faces, and we will call that by its name like this. So we've got our rectangular pyramid right here because we've got a rectangle as the base, and we've got the four triangles lateral faces and then we've got a triangular pyramid right here where we can see a triangle actually makes up the base and then all the other ones are going to be still triangle lateral faces and we've got that apex on the top and one thing we will also often do when we are dealing with 3d, sh 3D shapes is making something called a net now a net as we can see right here it says is the unfolded flattened version of a three-dimensional figure often used to calculate the surface area of a shape and again the surface area is just the total combined area of all the faces so if we are drawing a net generally what we're going to do is we're going to start by thinking about one of the sides usually i like to start with the base and so our base right here we could say is this 10 by 3 
And so I'm just going to draw that 10 by 3 rectangle approximately right here. And then we want to think about those dimensions. And I like how it kind of filled them in as I started to kind of put this together, just to kind of remind myself. So the next face that I'm going to see is the left and right side. And so I'm going to use kind of green just to show what I'm talking about. And so I'm going to take that piece, I'm going to sort of draw it right here on that side. And then there's also going to be one on the other side. So I'm just kind of imagining again, you've got the base there and you're kind of unfolding or flattening it. I'm just going to make it a little bit wider. And that dimension, right, that was four wide. And then we've got some other ones. We've got the front and the back. And so we can kind of use orange and we'll just draw that right here. And we'll fill it in and then we'll do another one for the other side for the front right here. So that's that one right there. And then that leaves us with five shapes right now. However, we actually should have six faces for rectangular prism. So the last one is the matching side to the base um, because there are two bases in this. So I'm going to draw an additional one. Now you could draw it right here and that would work. Or if you wanted to, you could draw it right here and that would work. Basically, you just want to have it so that if you were to fold it up together, it would make that same shape. Um, and then if we wanted to find the surface area, we're just going to kind of calculate the dimensions of each of those pieces and add them together. Um, so if we look right here, this bottom part, this is a 10 by 3, so that would give us 30. We're just multiplying for these orange pieces. They are 4 by 10, so they are both equal to 40. And then these little green pieces on the side are 4 by 3 rectangles, so those would be equal to 12. So then to find the surface area of the whole thing, we would just have to add all those together two of each piece, right? And so that would give us four and then eight, 16. So 164 inches would be, inches squared would be our surface area. And then we'll do one other real quick example of a net. And so this one is, you can see a square based pyramid. So you wanna start when you're drawing a net by thinking about what is that base piece um, and this square base pyramid, that square is the base. And so I will just draw my six by six square right here. And then each of the sides are gonna be six on that. And then I would also wanna think about what are the other pieces. And the other pieces we can see each of those faces in every pyramid are gonna be triangle. And we've got four of those because one is gonna be attached to each, each side. So like these triangles right here. And we can see that the slant height right here is listed as five. So that's actually how long the each triangle is going to be. So I can kind of draw a triangle there, a triangle there, a triangle there, and then one more right here. And this isn't perfect to scale, but it's good enough. And the height of each triangle, like if we were to be kind of going up like this, is going to be five. So now if we want to find the, and all of those are going to be the same, right? All of those, if I was to measure those, they're all going to be that same. They're all that height of five. And so now if I want to find the area, I'm going to do base times height divided by two. For each triangle, the base is six, five is the height. So we would have six times five divided by two or 30 divided by two is 15. So each of these have a area of 15 and then the square inside is a six by six so that would have an area of 36 so to find so i have my net right here if i want to find the surface area i just add those together so i'd have 36 plus 15 and then 15 times 4 would give us 60 so that would give us 96 in total, we don't have the units, but 96 square units would be our surface area. And we've got all those different parts, the bases, the lateral faces. If we want to make a net, we just sort of imagine unfolding each of those faces. And then finally, we can find the surface area by just adding those all together.